Hi everyone, my name is Tomás Audino. I'm here to show you a trading strategy in which I've been working for the last month. So first I'm going to explain you the strategy fundamentals. Then I am going to deploy it using Hummingbot's script module. And finally we're going to analyze the results and make some conclusions. The first step here is to introduce the strategy and its background. So the strategy is a trend follower based mainly in a custom indicator called MACD Cumulative Difference. A month ago I was watching a video from Training Lab explaining a MACD strategy, so I took apart from it and made it my own way. Okay, so let's watch briefly the Training Lab explanation and then we will continue. The MACD indicator is insanely good at finding trends and markets. How you can tell if a chart is about to have an upward trend is by looking for a cross upwards between the MACD line and the signal line. For example, here the MACD crosses above the signal line, indicating the chart is in an upward momentum. And here the MACD crosses below the signal line, indicating it's in a downward momentum. You can also use the histogram to indicate how much momentum there actually is. So if the histogram is getting bigger, that means there is an increase in momentum. If it's getting smaller, there's a decrease in momentum. This MACD strategy combined with a 200 day moving average works extremely well only if there's a lot of price movement. Where the strategy starts to get kind of iffy and giving false signals is when the chart starts going sideways and losing momentum. So as you can see here, the chart is moving sideways and lost almost all of its upward momentum and the MACD is giving lots of false signals. If you traded here, odds are you probably lost money. Okay, now, so hoping that one day I'll be making wonderful videos such as Trading Lab, please let me continue with this humble explanation. At this point, we have identified the MACD histogram basic strategy fundamentals and the main source of mistakes, which are sideways markets. To deal with this, let's make a hypothesis that is, that the MACD histogram signal is valid only when there is a sustained momentum change. Now, we're going to understand what is a sustained momentum change. So, as Trading Lab previously mentioned, the histogram measures the momentum of the price. However, if you want to assess how much sustained is this momentum, it's a good idea to measure the cumulative relative difference of the histogram. So, uh, I have prepared for you this custom view in Trading View, so you can visually understand my point. The first one is a candlestick with the price movements. The second one here is a monthly histogram normalized. We'll back to this normalization concept later, so don't worry about it. And please notice that the MACD and signal lines aren't necessary for this experiment. And the last one here is the monthly histogram normalized cumulative relative difference. Yes, that I have mentioned before. I know it's a long name, but look how simple is the interpretation of this indicator. For now, we can forget about price movements and let's just focus on these two indicators. Notice that when the MACD starts rising, the cumulative zoom below starts growing and vice versa when it starts falling. When there is a direction change, the cumulative zoom resets to the new opposite direction first difference. Okay, so now this really starts feeling like a sustainability measure. The only thing left is setting a threshold to figure out the signal. Now it's time to talk about the previous normalization concept. If we want to set a threshold, we would like to standardize the scale and that's not the market scenario. So as we can see in this brief analysis, we have different scales in different markets. If we divide the MACD histogram value by the close price, you can visually check that this normalization was successful and if you're afraid of losing information, don't worry because the shape will be the same. So at this point we have defined two rules, a MACD histogram sign greater or lower than zero and a MACD cumulative difference filter. One final rule that I'd like to include is a standard deviation threshold because we are going to use dynamic day profit or stop loss positions according to the price volatility. If this volatility is too low, we are at risk of trading in fee zones. Uh, the problem lies here. Uh, this variable will be referred as target and it's another normalized value. So let's build a strategy. 
We will be dividing the strategy parameters into four sections. First, let's examine the market data. We will be trading in Doge BUSD using a five minute interval on Binance for Petrols. Next, we have the initial strategy settings. In this instance, uh, I have 149.02 BUSD in my Perpetuals wallet and I will be placing orders of 20 BUSD with a leverage of 20. This results in a margin per order of 1 BUSD. And at the bottom, we have customized the strategy thresholds uh, mentioned in the previous slide. Let's stop for a while in the configuration for long positions. We have two axes. On the y-axis we have uh, returns and in x-axis we have the target. We will replace the standard deviation span attribute with a value of 100. And our stop loss and take profit multipliers will be used to manage our target value. This allows us to choose different factors such as, I don't know, one, two or a half standard deviations depending on our preference. I have chosen 0.3 because it did well during backtesting and if you look at the graph, uh, as the target value increases, the size of the take profit and stop loss orders will also increase. It is important to note that the target threshold is set too low, the position size will fall within the fit zone, located below this first line here. Sometimes the target will be too high and it would be a good idea to set a trading stop loss because if we are at very wide positions and we have enough profit, we would like to capture this before it breaks down. Uh, I have set the activation here in 0.4% and the delta in uh, minus 0.2%, again outside the fee zone. Okay, so now we need to put all of this into production, so it's time to talk about deployment. We need two things, first, uh, having both instance of course, and second, a custom script generating signal and managing position settings. I won't include in this video all of the process because I think uh, it's out of scope. However, it's a good idea to share a step-by-step -step of the stuff I have used. First of all, I have launched an EC2 instance. I have experimented troubles with smaller machines than T3 small, but you are free to choose any one you want and try out. And I have chosen Singapore because it's near from Binance servers. Once inside, I installed the Docker Compose last version and then I used the Hummingbot with dashboard Docker Compose, which is available in Hummingbot's Deploy Examples repository. And we are going to change two little things here. We need to create a scripts folder, adding this line here. And we are going to change the version from the latest to development to get the last features. Okay. So now copy this file into your EC2 instance and once you're ready, just run it with Docker Compose app in detached mode and go to the scripts folder, which is available now, and paste the script that in my case, it's available in my fork. Uh, finally, attach your Hummingbots container, connect to Binance Perpetual and start the script. Even though it's optional, I suggest you to configure your telegram so you can check your bot status at any time and stop it if you are at risk. After a week, it's time to see the results of the strategy in action, okay? So let's look at the big picture first. Here we can see a candlestick, the MACD indicators, the target and PNL with and without fees. I'm going to start saying that we lost money, but I think it's a low price for the insights we will discuss right now. Uh, one of our strategy fundamentals was that sideways scenarios aren't good for MACD. And we can appreciate that uh, there is a very low activity when the price hasn't enough movement, uh, so that's good. Also, it shows a really nice understanding of side choosing at high price movements, for example here and that's a good thing too. We'll be back to the candlestick analysis in a moment. Let's watch a metrics summary to understand better the bot's performance. Okay. Over the course of the past seven days, we have incurred to a total loss of uh, almost seven BUSD. This represents a decrease of 4.5% from our initial portfolio. 
During this period, our training activity was marked by the execution of over 400 positions with a total volume of approximately 9,000. The total accuracy was of 46%, mainly affected by the take profit and stop loss multipliers, and that we are going to see in a moment. Here we have a profit factor of minus uh, 0.6. I don't know if the negative sign uh, goes there, but the important thing is that there is a negative correlation between our profits and losses, which is at this point uh, quite obvious. Uh, the maximum drawdown was around 7. This value represents the largest decline in our investment portfolio from its peak value. In our case, almost the beginning of the strategy. Um, finally, we have a negative average profit per order and an average duration of 4 minutes. If we analyze the close types, we can see that the take profits are behind the stop losses and there are some trending stop activations. On the right, we can see the long and short positions were pretty balanced. And if we go down for this strategy, I have made a particular analysis of strikes measuring the length of each one and classifying them into positive or negative. If you know Martingale's system, uh, this strategy is a very good fit because we got a maximum of 7 negative consecutive results. If we compare the net PNL with the trades PNL, we can see that the more painful losses were fees, and that's because the positions we open in strong price movements are too small, thus they are highly sensitive to microprice fluctuations. Uh, I already mentioned those multipliers when I was talking about accuracy and I told you I have chosen 0.3 for both of them based in my backtesting and now I understand that my tool hasn't enough resolution to capture all of these orders. Uh, a potential option was to use uh, higher take profits on stop loss multipliers to pay less fee and get more profits. <clears throat> the other uh, loss factor uh, is the missing stop signal, something like an um, overfollowing. Uh, I need to think about this logic in which ways I could implement it without making this complex because the idea of this indicator is to make something simple to understand. If you're still with me, I'd like to thank you because I know it's a lot of information from one shot, but I'm sure you'll get through it. Uh, my final conclusions are if you use a target base, take profit and stop loss orders, ensure the value of the multiplier isn't too low because you are going to pay a lot of fees and it would be hypersensitive. Uh, Mark the cumulative difference is a good ally to avoid sideways markets or to join them. Yes, Thinking about risk strategies in sideways markets isn't a bad idea. Uh, another is that it probably needs another complementary indicator to perform well especially one acting as a break. Then at the state of art of this indicator, Martin Gale's system will be profitable with a controlled risk. And finally, if you are trying to build a directional customer strategy and you know Python, uh, Hamibot is your best option. If anyone has any idea, I'm all ears. Uh, thanks everybody and see you in the next video.